Hello, this is Haku Devine, and we are are going to be reading SCP-821, 22, 23, 24, and 25. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like, like and, and subscribe. And please comment down any questions you might have for Haku. Me! Let's get right into this. SCP-21 Skin Worm And they spelled like a dragon, not like those things that you find in the, on sidewalks sometimes. SCP Item number SCP-21 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-21 is an obligate parasite of the human and body. Containment therefore is no more difficult than containing an, an adult human. Most cells will suffice. I am is currently housed in detention cell L217 A on subject D139. Only Class C personnel are eligible for hosting SCP-21. As long as that a given subject survives as a host for SCP-21, he is exempt from normal monthly terminations of the class personnel. I should probably explain that. Basically, the D-Class are ex-death ex row inmates that are now basically used as test subjects and grunt work for the SCP that can at any time be terminated, as in murdered, and usually only serve for a month before they get terminated anyway. Right, we'll, we'll continue onward. The SCP description. Wow. SCP-21 takes the form of a large and elaborate tattoo of a serpentine dragon in the oriental style, covering approximately 0.8 square meters of skin. The tattoo is fully animate within the confines of its host skin and behaves largely as a normal animal would, albeit in only two dimensions. The tattoo's movement causes constant pain to its host, comparable and similar in character to stimulus tattooing and tattoo removal on a large scale. The organism spend, tends to spend most of its time on and near the torso. SCP-21 displays no intelligence beyond a basic pattern of feeding and, and locomotion. Although actually measuring the intelligence of a two-dimensional life form has proven difficult thus far. SCP-21 appears to feed exclusively on pigments in the health skin. This can and include with melanin, in which case the tattoo subject appears to be suffering from vitigo. However, the organism shows a marked preference for other tattoos and will seek out and devour these before resorting to natural pigments. As we know that the feeding process itself, beyond the sensation of movement, is painless. Normal tattoo ink simply vanishes as it is eating. The organism maintains a constant size, and no excretions have been discovered. The organism is capable of clearing over 0.6 meters of skin per hour. One may feed SCP-21 by quickly tattooing fruits or small animals on the host. SCP-21 can be transferred between hosts by various forms of physical contact, with differing rates of success. In this case, in the case of a successful transfer, the organism simply swims from one person to the other. Lewd times appears to be the most reliable method of transfer with a 93 rate of transmission. However, due to the severe pain involved, this is less than ideal. Contact between two open wounds is generally preferable. Transfer is more complicated to see subjects, though not unreasonably so. The organism suffers no effects from the death of its host and continues to consume pigments. Transmission between species is unknown. Previous tests suggest it either to be suggested to be either impossible or exceedingly rare. SCP-21 does confirm or some benefits to its host. A two has been proven to accelerate the re release and reuptake of epinine and friend and decrease lactic build acid buildup. 
providing boosts of strength, confidence, and pain tolerance in stressful situations, and reducing the usual after effects of weakness and fatigue. In addition, the tattoo seems to have the some beneficial effect on your host's immune system. Aggression profiles in hosts are generally higher than average, though whether this is a direct effect of the tattoo or simply a reaction to the constant pain remains to be seen. The symbiotic relationship is usually limited by how long the host can tolerate such pain in everyday life. This has culminated in self oofs in a number of subjects. In rare cases, hosts have been have also fallen victim to fatal skin and infections. SCP-21's origins and nature are a mystery. Tracing its transmission from host to host is hardly feasible within the confines of secrecy, and the organism could well be hundreds of years old, if not more. Nevertheless, SCP-21's captivity is one of the longest is in the this Foundation's history at nearly data expunged years, and has been very educational thus far. Current research focuses mainly on observing the characteristics of life in two dimensions. So what we have here is a tattoo that will eat your pigments or other tattoos if you have any. Luckily, it's completely contained by the SCP Foundation. Moving on to SCP-22, also known as the Morgue. This one might be a little bit more... Oh, not as lengthy as I thought. Anyway. Item number, SCP-22. Object Class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. A vault door has been installed following incident and... and... 22827. Lucille SCP-22. It is to remain locked at all times, with the sole exception being the appearance of an instance of SCP-22. One, the original door of SCP-22 was destroyed during incident 22827, with attempts of replacement being met with failure. Security cameras have been installed for to monitor for instances of SCP-22-1. In the event that an instance of SCP-22-1 appears, automated systems should incinerate at the moment it leaves SCP-22. At this point, the vault door may be unlocked to admit cleanup of crews. Should the automated systems fail to destroy the instance of 22-1, response teams are clear to enter and neutralize it. Under no circumstances may any living human enter SCP-22 except at the order of Class 4 personnel for testing purposes. Class 4 personnel may also order instances of 22-1 to be captured and held. However, they may not be removed from SCP-22 with containment facilities. Description. This is going to be a long one. SCP-22 is a morgue in the basement of a redacted hospital in Great Britain. Until 1980 blank, there were no reported anomalous occurrences within the morgue. Reports of strange activity were first received in November of 1980 unknown. I'm going to say 88. Why not? The area was soon quarantined by Foundation, with an official story being released that the entire building was had been condemned. The reason for the sudden manifestation of a strange properties remains under investigation. Periodically, a round drawer within the morgue will open to reveal a cadaver under a covered sheet. After approximately six minutes, open the cadaver will animate and attempt to leave the morgue. At this point, the cadaver is given the designation in 22-1. In some cases, the cadaver will be too damaged or decomposed to successfully exit SCP-22, or even rise from the table it lies on. In this case, SCP-22-1 will typically struggle and twitch on the table until expiration occurs. Should an instance of SCP-22-1 expire while remaining on the table, the table slides back into the drawer, which then shuts. Reports indicate that the set of burned tissue is evident immediately following such an event. The energy source that sustains instances of, of SCP-22-1 is currently unknown. Instances do not breathe, eat, or sleep, and their bodies produce no heat. Analysis of SCP-22-1 and following expiration has discovered no abnormal organs or chemicals present. Present, They appear to be fully human cadavers. Instances also possess physical strength that exceeds that of normal humans. 
though direct testing has proven problematic. Rather, estimate researchers estimate this thing to be approximately 500 newtons or 112 pounds of lifting force greater than what one would expect of a human body sharing a similar condition. Analysis is underway to determine if its effect is, ex is connected to the unknown power source or if it is an entirely a separate phenomenon. That's a weird word. When body parts are severed from SCP-2021, the portions with the great is mass retains all effects, all other pieces become inert. Destruction of the head or brain does not neutralize SCP-2021, instead, the lower t or so and limbs remain animate. Complete destruction tissue appears to be the only method of successfully determining instances of SCP-2021. Left alone, instances of 2021 will simply expire, all motion ceases, and they appear to become normal human cadavers again. The amount of time this takes depends on how damaged the body is and the rate of decomposition, and can take anywhere between two days and three weeks. Investigation has revealed that the bodies acting as SCP-21 match the description of cadavers reported to have been stolen from morgues across the country. The mechanism for this transfer is currently being researched. Adding any new matter to SCP-22 has thus far proved impossible. Any object that enters SCP-22 disappears shortly after passing through the door, leaving no trace. This includes inanimate objects and biological specimens. See Addendum 2201 and 2202. So long as the nisses of, of SCP-22, I possess a functioning mouth, tongue, and trachea, it is Oh, so long as, as an instance of 22-1 possesses a functioning mouth, tongue, and trachea, it is able to communicate fully with researchers. See interview log L22751 for details. We'll get to that. Addendum 2201. A request was submitted to create a new address of SCP-22 by removing a portion of the south wall. Request pending approval. Addendum 2202. A pile of matter was discovered on the floor with, of the room directly above SCP-22. It appears to contain all matter that has been sent into SCP-22, with the exception of humans. All materials appeared broken and worn down. Metallic components were covered in large amounts of rust, with all biological parts being held being in various stages of decomposition. Testing revealed that the time between inserting an object into, into SCP-22 and it reappearing above to be precisely 183 seconds. Humans who enter, however, do not appear in said pile. And said humans appear to be, become integrated into the morgue and relate it or animate as instances of SCP-221. Right? Let's see this interview log. Each of the following interviews begin in much the same way. The instance of SCP-2021 will typically be hysterical until Foundation and personnel are able to calm slash restrain them. These fortunes have been omitted. Date, March and sometime in March in the 1980s. Interviewer, interviewee, I mean, SCP-2021-2. Interviewer, Doctor, Doctor Unknown. Notes, SCP-8221-2 was the second instance of SCP-221 that the Foundation discovered, the first having been destroyed on site by Foundation agents. SCP-221-2 had the body of an Asian male, approximately 54 years old. Its chest had been stitched up, evidence of an autopsy. Begin log. Please identify yourself. <sighs> My name is John Arbuckle. What what the heck is going on? That's what we're trying to figure out, John. How did you get to this state? I I don't know. I was driving my car. Coming home from never mind. I was driving and I crashed. Then what happened? Nothing. I woke up here. Please, this has to be... 
So I remember being in a car accident, then woke up here in the morgue. Do you have any idea how you got here? I didn't get here! Don't you get it? This isn't me! I'm not me! What do you mean, you aren't me? At this point, SCP-2212 became severely agitated and had to be physically restrained. This required six agents due to strength increase associated with SCP with instances of SCP-221. Eventually, SCP-2212 was calmed and the interview and the interview proceeded. Now, would you please explain what you meant? This is not me. I saw my reflection in steel. I'm not some old Asian and frick. This isn't me. End log. Following the last statement, SCP-2212 began to smash its head against the wall. Once further restrained, it began to scream unintelligibly for several hours before falling silent. It continued to struggle, though apparently unable to speak for an additional six days until it finally ceased motion. During this time, it continued decomposing at a natural rate. An examination of the body following this interview was unable to determine a cause of death. As many of the internal organs had been removed, the only injury that did not appear to be a result of a previous surgery slash autopsy was a damaged trachea. Date March 1980-something Interviewee SCP-2215 Interviewer Doctor Unknown Notes SCP-2215 animated shortly after or D5619 was sent into SCP-22 and subsequently disappeared. SCP-2215 had the body of an approximately 12-year-old female missing its red arm and a large portion of its torso. Following the incident with SCP-2211 and to three audiences of, of SCP-21 are physically restrained before are being introduced to valuable personnel, with SCP-2215 being no exception. <sighs> Begin log. Please say your name. What did you jerks do to me? Please state your name. What the frick did you do to me? We have done nothing to you. Now please state your name. You know who I freaking am. Refresh my memory then, please. I'm the guinea pig you just fricked up. Don't tell me you forgot me, a doctor or a hole. Are you D5619? In the flesh. And for your information, and, 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 and jerk, my name is Redacted. Now change me back, you son out of a mother. Change me freaking back. And log. At this point, Dr. Blank asked SCP-2215 several questions to verify its identity. Though its identity was confirmed to be that of D-5619, no further useful information was gained from SCP-2215. It was kept in a holding cell until expiry two days later. After three weeks, the body of, of D-5619 animated as SCP-2217. In a brief interview with at SCP-2217, it claimed to be an 89-year-old year female. So SCP-22 is a morgue that somehow creates a form of zombie.
Next we have SCP-23, also known as the Black Shuck. Item number SCP-23, Object Class Euclid. Those were containment procedures. Used to be SCP-23 is to be kept in a containment in a standard 5 by 5 meter containment unit. Now, SCP-23 is to be containment of walled, walled off intersection of two corridors at site blank with at least 3 meters of space in each direction and 4 or at 3 of the 4 ends. In addition to the real door, security cameras will be placed and maintained above all four doors. At all times, SCP-23's eye sockets are to be filled with, with spherical inserts made of hard rubber. Eye inserts must be replaced as they degrade. The gradation can be monitored by measuring the brightness of the burning effect as observed by security footage. Brightness greater than 12 of Kendall uh, requires that the inserts be replaced within 12 hours. Eye inserts are only to be replaced individually and only after the sun has completely set. Personnel are not to look directly into eye sockets of SCP-23 at any time. Following, following Incident 2327, all reflective surfaces including displays, monitors, and eyewear of any sort are not permitted within 30 meters of SCP-23 cells. This includes monitors linked to security cameras within its enclosure. Security personnel point also checkpoints outside both quarters will enforce and adhere to this measure. I'll read that right after we're done with this documentation. Description. SCP is a large, sexless, shaggy canine, one and a half meters at the shoulder, with black fur. It has bright orange-red eyes and prominent teeth. Or it did. What's this about? Guess we'll find out. We need to continue reading this for now, though. Before incident 26, 20, I mean 23, 26. Anytime an individual makes eye contact with SCP-23, either that person or a member of their immediate family will die exactly one year after eye contact is broken. Research into the method of selection is incomplete due to a moratorium on experiments, but the available data suggests that having a larger or immediate family lessens the chance of the individual making eye contact like themselves dying, and neither a pattern nor a preference of the victim types have been found. This may indicate that SP-23's victim is designated entirely at random, but it is unknown whether the selection occurs at the beginning or at the end of one year or time period. Attempts to terminate an individual who has made eye contact with SCP-23 and their time period is found before the one year their time period has end ended. Data expunged. Autopsies of uh, individuals killed by SCP E23 is effect show that while outwardly appearing unharmed, their remains have been filled in with highly compacted ash, including but not uh, limited to all organ systems and circulatory effects system. Muscle tissue, bones, and brain tissue universally show signs of exposure to temperatures above a free unknown on degrees Celsius. If not contained in a setting that at least superficially resembles a crossroads, SV-23 will face through walls to get to the nearest surface location, inserting all materials it passes through. SCP-23 was, was brought to the Foundation's at uh, attention when it attacked a church in the unknown. While it was as in session, killing blank civilians and redacted as a result 
of eye contact. Following retrieval of SCP-23, Class B amnestics were administered to all witnesses and surviving victims. The incident was covered up as a case of arson. Addendum SCP-2201 SCP-2201 broke containment on blank by passing through its saw. L wall incident in 2301. SCP-23 was later discovered at the intersection of two corridors somewhere around site blank. Agent blank knows SCP is similarly to a redacted. Those are confirmed procedures for SCP-23 updated. Assistant researcher blank issued a reprimand for negligence. Addendum 23-2. SCP-23 has been responsible for the death of a blank personnel and blank civilians since it was first brought into containment on October 12th, something 94. Addendum 23-03. Request for reclassification to Ketter pending. Due to both anomalies focusing specifically on geographic spaces, the destructive capabilities, and the canine appearance, it is possible that SCP-1111 and 1 may be a variant of the same phenomenon observed in SCP-23, or vice versa. Investigation into the origin of both anomalies is ongoing due to the inability to capture SCP-1111-1 for study. Investigations are currently focused on SCP-23. Anyway, let's read some of these. SCP-2326, The Incident Report. Personnel involved. Dr. Blank, 5D class personnel. Date unknown. Location, site unknown. Description, an attempt to curtail the po danger posed by SCP-2326, in 23, Dr. Blank has approved the removal of both SCP-23's eyes and teeth. Immediately after both its eyes were removed, SCP-23 breached security by vanishing completely. SCP-23 was reobtained and on a stretch of interstate at Blank at uh, on a stretch of interstate Blank at 4 or 37 p.m. and brought it back into containment where D-class personnel finished pulling out its teeth. With the total number of civilians exposed to SCP-23 during this period is unknown. Death record monitoring has tied nine civilian deaths to this incident. Time stamps amps over the course of the next 40 years at SCP-23 Ranch only while the sun was visible in the sky from outside the site's blank. As of blank, Dr. Er unknown has been suspended pending disciplinary review for contributing to, if not having been directly responsible for incident 2326. Dr. Utter Blank is now in charge of, of SCP-23. <sighs> the increased difficulties in containment that have been and incurred as a result of Dr. Blank should serve to remind all personnel of the Foundation's purpose, secure, contain, and protect. Research, experimentation, convenience, and even the safety of Foundation personnel are secondary concerns. We are not working to protect ourselves. O5 unknown. Addendum M2326-2, where the total of blank blank bodies at the time of death exactly one year after S after incident 2326 have been identified as consistent with SCP-23 exposure. Now we go to 2327. Incident 2327. SCP involved SCP-23. Personnel involved. Dr. Blank. Data expunged. Date unknown. Location. Site unknown. Description. Timeline of, of events. Hmm. At 10 seconds, a pair of glass eyeballs are inserted into the eye sockets of SCP-23. Alright. 
maybe. By 2D class personnel. At 15, in seconds past midnight, glass eyes take on an orange red glow, similar to what SV23's real eyes looked like before removal. 3 minutes and 13 seconds past as midnight, Walton Glass begins to run out of SCP-23's eye sockets. 5 minutes and 54 seconds after midnight, data expunge appear on all lenses, windows, mirrors, monitors, and glass surfaces at sight blank. 6 minutes and 12 seconds after midnight, evacuation of sites blank ordered. 6 hours, 54 minutes, and 7 seconds after midnight, I guess in the morning. Sun is well over horizon. D-class personnel send to check around SCP in clo 23's enclosure. That expunge gone. Only trace of SCP-23 is a burnt section of a floor around a puddle of colored glass. Personal log of Dr. Blank. Date. Unknown. It's my fault. I have doomed my research team and probably the rest of the facility. And all that's left is to keep trying. We must contain SCP-23. Note, on an unknown date, one year after incident 2327, blank personnel were uh, entered in an unmarked mass as grave, on site unknown. Now, we get to hear what the what this is, mother's love. The passions of the dead can be vast and mighty, but we are not all powerful. There are things I cannot see. There are things I can never touch. There are things I can never overpower. Because of that, there are many things I can never protect. My children who birth hurt me from. Because of that, oftentimes they die in bitterness and pain. Because of that, their deaths can also birth hate. Hates, large and small. Hates are things I can see and touch. I must see and touch them. Because my children who birth with me cannot, I must protect my children who birth me where I can. Just as my strange brethren are driven to curse them, I do not have the power to unmake hates. The best I can do is bind them to a seal made from things that my children who birthed me can see and touch. The truth of our nature is that is all we have and are. And the denial of the truth is the denial of our power. But more importantly, my children who birthed me can guard themselves against what they can see and touch. The form of a ladybird beat. It or butterfly is a fine seal of small hates. In a seal that size, it is easy for me to reduce the power of their curses to almost nothing. The larger seals needed to hold larger hates are more are difficult. A hate so that a, as a cat can still cause sickness and misfortune. Then there are vast hates, birth from wars and plagues that kill together many of my children who birthed me. There are few loves vast enough to deny the truth of their nature. But I have tried once. It was a hate birth of smoldering rage in the hearts of so many who died, knowing that their bodies would be burned together in a pit of pestilence and an and an in on an, 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 I rarely call upon the power of the light that brings life. I have to create a seal, but there is little choice against a hate nature or it's so strongly of death. The weakest part of any seal is always in the eyes, because they are windows to the soul. My children who birthed me not only believed in and as a concept, but concepts are far more real to my brethren, whether they are strange or not. And I, than what my children who birthed me would think of as concrete. To line up the windows is make an open path between in a soul and the most vile. Of course, the sealed hate can still inflict. I used every method that I knew to reinforce the seal's eyes. But even then, I could not set off from setting a cause of death and anyone it meets gazes with. My blessing could only delay the curse's full effects for a single cycle around the light that brings life. My misguided children, why did you take its eyes?
Well, that was very odd. I guess SCP-23 is a being that when you look into its eyes, you will die at one year after seeing it. But now that you that the SCP Foundation took away its eyes, that might not be the case so much anymore. Anyway, let's move on to SCP-24. Um, game show of death. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Item number, SCP-24. Object class, Euclid. Due to its nature, SCP-24 cannot be moved to a secure location, so security measures must be placed on site to conceal its location. Five identical looking replicas have been erected up around SCP-24. A tight security perimeter must be maintained after around SCP-24's compound at all times, with ever security teams guarding SCP-24 and its replicas. None of the security teams, server team leaders, will be informed of the location of SCP-24. SCP-24 must be secured within the identically sealed blast doors and reinforced armored walls to prevent unauthorized entry. Under no circumstances can any security or research personnel enter SCP-24. Only D-Class personnel are allowed entry and strictly for research purposes only. All researchers are to observe and experiment with SCP-24 from the Remote Observation Lab. Any personnel attending to relieve the Remote Observation Lab or enter SCP-24 without a prior approval from a level 4 researcher must be immediately apprehended with determination at authorized. Should a containment be breached or SCP-24 is true nature compromised, then the entire compound must be, be destroyed via specialized demolition charges planted throughout the compound. Description: SCP-24 is an advanced soundstage that was, one own, that was once owned by, by unknown. However, SCP-24 itself has been abandoned since, since 19-something. And it is unknown whether its special properties manifested before or after its environment. SC-24 is located in the heart of, uh, of blank blank and was initially discovered when a group of teenagers or you was broken into the abandoned compound. The testimony of the lone winner when she turned herself into the police was enough to have foundation assets mobilized to contain SCP-24. Upon entering SCP-24, visitors are immediately greeted by an anomalous announcer who communicates the intercom and is able to hear and comprehend the voices of people within an SCP-24. The announcer will inform the contestants they are about to take part in a game show, which winners will win fabulous prizes, but will also warn that the game will be extremely hazardous and that losers and that the losers will never leave SCP-24. It is at this point the announcer presents the choice of whether to stay or leave SCP-24. Contestants who, who accept or continue to participate in the game, while those who decline are immediately expelled from SCP-24. Contestants that win the game or decline to participate may never enter SCP-24 again, as entry is denied by an impenetrable, invisible barrier. It is then that the contestants are led to the actual game. The style, composition, and appearance of the game always changes in every individual playthrough. But the game always centers around a long, elaborate obstacle course that the contestants must navigate through. The rules are also the rules also vary. Some play Aethers only allow a single winner, while others encourage the creation of teams to win the game. More often than not, the obstacles seen in these games range from incredibly benign to extremely hazardous and life-threatening. As the contestants attempt to negotiate the course, the announcer will continuously update the status and act actively participate in the game, often giving good advice, conversing with contestants, and adding new rules. As the game progresses, the obstacles will become significantly more dangerous and difficult to overcome. And it's not surprising to have the entire pool of contestants to come to the rigors of the obstacle course. If such an event happens, the announcer will express sadness at the lack of a winner and SV-24 will shut down, resulting only when a new batch of contestants enter. Any attempts to break the rules, such as assaulting other contestants or deliberately bypassing obstacles, are met with extreme violence. The announcer will call out the offending contestant, 
who will be quickly and forcibly ex ejected from the course by studio guardians. These studio guardians will immediately materialize within SCP-24 when caught upon by the announcer and disappear when not needed. The contestant will never be seen again. When a winner is declared, they will receive a random grant and prize. Any contestants that have have survived the course but failed to win are immediately declared losers by the announcer. The lights will switch off, and the winner will immediately appear outside of SCP-24 with their prize, while the losers completely disappear. However, the most uh, mysterious aspect of SCP-24 is that after every game, a VHS tape or DVD will appear in the mailbox outside of SCP-24's main entrance. The re this recording is a complete record of the entire game that was previously played, even though Windows Earth have claimed that they have never seen any cameras or recording devices inside SCP-24. Also, more strangely, a live studio audience can be seen in the background cheering on the contestants. Again, winners have claimed to have not seen a live studio audience while inside SCP-24. First of all, he slash she is not uh, at all inclusive of genders. I refer to them, which is why I will continue to uh, uh, use that when I see this sort of thing. This is most likely outdated and unnecessary. Either way, it shows a lack of understanding of, uh, of human pronouns. Let's continue. I did them M1. So far, a list of prizes awarded to winners has included, but it's not limited to cash prizes, electronics, various consumer goods, cars, collectibles, full page vacations to various countries, data expunge. Close examination of these prizes have confirmed that they are completely genuine and possess no unusual abilities or characteristics whatsoever. There appears to be no consistent pattern earned for what the prizes will be. Addendum 2. In an attempt to track where the losers are taken, GPS locators are planted on, S on subjects XD124 through D135 when, when group D245 was sent into SP24. When the losers were taken away, all signals from the beacons were lost. Whether it is because the beacons were destroyed or because the losers were taken to an area that cannot be located via uh, GPS is currently unknown. Addendum 3, the announcer living within SCP-24 appears to be sentient and aware of events that take place outside of the compound. During the test group of, uh, of D-23, which consisted of uh, only of Dr. Or Blank, the announcer in instead engaged in a conversation with Dr. Blank. Analysis of the conversation and have shown that the majority of the subjects are centered around pop culture and information distributed through television, implying that SP-24 is somehow able to access and interpret television signals, cutting all power and signal lines, as well as removing any potential wireless receiving equipment on SP-24 does not affect SP-24 in any way. But it became clear that no other consistent would participate in that kindly as as Doctor Unknown to leave SCP-24 and suggested he return with more contestants. Hmm. Wonder or how out of date SCP-24 or, or the interview in SCP-24 would be now that nobody watches TV anymore. The studio guardian said the announcer are uses to enforce the rules vary in appearance every game, just like the course. If they appear, the Guardians will always be dressed in a manner that matches with the theme, theme of the obstacle course. The only common attributes all Guardians share are the possession and of humanoid appearance, abilities suddenly appear and disappear, superhuman strength, and face concealing masks or headgear. However, winners have claimed that the Guardians have no apparent shape or form inside SCP-24. Instead, appearing as huge, shadowy figures that engulf the offender. So this is a game show of that. I have a terrifying one. Anyway, on to the last SCP of today.
a well-worn wardrobe. <sighs> Item number SCP-25 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-25 is only to be opened during testing, as is the room to which SCP-25 is stored. Entry codes are to be given only to authorized as research and security personnel. No order to return protocols required. Description SCP-25 is a wooden wardrobe measuring and 0.97 in meters by 0.62 meters by 1.95 meters. Full all of clothing dating in from a near number of time periods. Articles contained within the chest collectively named SCP-25-1 match with styles from of decades from the 1920s to the present. The apparel from each time frame varies with regard to style. For example, a polyester a striped shirt and pair of charcoal suit pants both correspond with general styles of the 70s and 1970s. The only unifying aspect of every article contained in SCP-25 is that each one is in poor condition. Mons have eaten and at much of the collection and tears and runs are not uncommon. When any item in, from SCP-25 is put on, the wearer is observed to either die or suffer from with an injury within 24 hours. The cause of death or injury in these instances is invariably linked to the aforementioned flaws in the clothing, but only ever appears is to be an unrelated incident. Wearing glove with a fingertip if cut off may result in a loss of the fingertip through a simple kitchen accident like chopping onions. Similarly, a simple of subject wearing a punch with a sleep missing will somehow cause us the loss of the uncovered at arm. In an attack by a wild animal or vehicle accident that necessitates the amputation of the limb, if placed in a sealed, unfurnished enclosure while wearing an item from the chest, the wearer will simply it will seem or other seemingly spontaneously contact a fleshing disease that begins in the areas not covered by the clothing, or suffer the failure of an organ located beneath an imperfection in the article. Diseases arising from such an instance may or may not be contagious. No study has been successfully undertaken due to speed at which the strains observed run through their occur or rank recommend that if possible samples of disease be taken to the lab for possible weaponization for possible weaponization. Following is an abridged testing log of SP twenty five. More testing will accompany the declassification of, of the document in its, in, in its entirety. Test log SP twenty five section one subject. D-778, a 42-year-old white male. Article, 1940s era white tuxedo. Imperfections, torn seen in left shoulder. Test res results. Social was allowed free roam with the halls under agent blank, blank supervision for approximately 45 minutes. Nothing uneventful occurred. However, at blank, security tapes and eyewitnesses indicate that at SCP-778, it appeared to make an attempt at attacking Agent Blank. He, in turn, earned an overcame the subject with a knife, causing an inch deep gash in MD-78's in left shoulder, precisely at the point where the tuxedo seam was ripped. Test halted, subject later terminated. Subject, D-690, a 26-year-old white male. Article, 2004 Boston Red Sox baseball cap. Imperfection, missing sizes are shown in back of cap. Local and front partially removed. Test results, placed in a sealed room with the test subject was a table on which there was a loaded Baby Eagle 9mm handgun, a grill lighter, and a hatchet. D nine six D six ninety chose to wear the cap backwards for the test. Potential effects of this decision and the outcome of the test are unknown. Subject expressed reluctance to touch any of the on the table for several hours. 
food and water were provided as necessary. That's four hours of general inactivity, so I freaked out the I got and examined it. While holding it ever roughly I in love with the subject discharged into the nineties forehead, where size adjustment band would have been. The round exited a subject near the part of the hat with the missing part of the logo. Creative and dark. Subjects D736, a 22 year old white male. D771, a 23 year old old white male. Article Burgundy East Striped Bet Sweater Vest dating from 1973. Imperfection Article seemed to have been partially eaten by moths, several large holes in front and of the in the front of the sweater. Twist results. D736 was asked by research to wear the sweater vest, which he did under the rest. D771 was given loaded handgun out of sight of the other test participant. And instructed to, on a given signal, fire all six shots in the direction of D736. After doing so, it was noted that every shot had fired passed through one of the holes in the sweater vest, leaving the the clothing intact and killing the seven and thirty six. Firing re retrieved, surviving the subjects transported back to the quarters. Just a couple more. I think it's like three now. Subject D seven and seventy one and a twenty three year old white male. Articles fire from as from above t Rial. Imperfections, same as mentioned. Test results. D771 was this time placed in an empty room. Dimensions and 15 meters by 15 meters by 15 meters. Only objects in the enclosure were lights overhead. Subjects initially complained of boredom. Then lay on his back and went to sleep. After 2 hours and 14 minutes, two of the fluorescent light tubes in the, in the ceiling suddenly dislodged and fell. Both landed squarely on holes in the sweater. Shattering upon impact, one of the tubes broke into jagged pieces that impelled oh, the D771 in several areas, but only again through gaps already present in the sweater vest. So the vitals resisted for another 6 minutes since these, these first testing location will be selected to minimize possible damage to the surrounding area. <sighs> Subject, Doctor Unknown. Unplanned experiment. An unidentified individual left an article of uh, SCP-25 on Doctor uh, Unknown's desk that looked similar to an object to an item of his own clothing. Any information about the incident and or the perpetrator of, of same should be reported immediately to senior staff. Article, Lightweight scarf. Dyed a number of colors. Imperfections. A heavily pulled seam called scarf to be considered Overly shorter and tighter in the middle. Test results. According to his, his itinerary, Dr. Blank, wearing the item from SCP-25, was en route to the enclosure of SCP Blank on Blank for routine in testing. However, he diverged from this intended path and began to in direction towards an entirely separate wing of this facility. So it then entered the a, a enclosure of SCP-173 without gathering in accompaniment or following safety procedures upon hearing the door closing, blinked, caused death left to assess single relation from a crushed windpipe. Well, oh yeah, 173 is the original SCP. We'll read about it in a lot of episodes. A lot of videos. It's either rewritten from original or it's going to be rewritten. I'm not sure yet. Anyway, final test. Subject D8 
802. A third year old Hispanic female. Article 1980s flash dance style white shirt. Imperfections right shoulder right shoulder removed. Left seat leave completely cut off. Entire bottom half is shredded. Test results. Data expunged. All present were presumed infected and quarantined and data expunged. All further a test involving 1980s era fashion have been postponed indefinitely due to the expenditures and safety hazards presented by the aforementioned experiment. Full cleanup is meant to take an additional blank weeks. It's like double digits, so. Dang. That's been chaotic. Anyway, this has been. Sorry. This has been SCP-21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.